This is the famous Zil armored car, which was produced in the Soviet Union. Such cars, known as member trucks, were intended only for members of the Politburo of the Central Committee of the CPSU. It was the highest rung of the hierarchy of the Communist Party, which ruled Soviet society from the moment it came to power in 1917 until the end of the 1980s. How did people live in the USSR under the leadership of one party? How did the party govern the country? What privileges did party officials have? What did the communists believe and what did they doubt? What were you afraid of and what results did you get in the end? In less than 10 years, it will turn out that under Khrushchev's leadership, the CPSU managed so masterfully that it almost achieved the construction of communism, including mass control. On July 30, 1961, the draft of the new program of the CPSU for 20 years was published, which stated that the current generation of Soviet people would live in a communist society. It was a beautiful motto, which most adherents to communism treated with humor, but no one took it seriously, and everyone laughed. Someone good-naturedly, someone maliciously, and someone generally treated this idea superficially. It is not by chance that in exactly 20 years a joke will appear instead of the promised communism, an Olympiad will be held in the USSR. But this will happen later, and then at the 22nd Party Congress a new version of the program with the moral code of the builder of communism was adopted. What requirements were presented to the builder of a bright future in the moral code, commitment to the cause of communism, honesty and truthfulness? Fyodor Berlatsky suggested using these Christian principles, do not kill your neighbor, don't steal. While working on the code members of the Central Committee of the CPSU worked in a closed dacha near Moscow. According to Berlatsky, the idea of using the commandments of Christ in a party document came to his mind after heated discussions during dinner with friends, the work immediately took a turn. However, the life of the people and the moral code has not become better. Life has shown that not all communists and their leaders, having come to power in the 17th year, adhered to the norms that were then declared in their moral code. Many of the past idealistic revolutionaries who came to power faced many of the temptations that power provided. For example, it was possible to occupy the palaces of princes or tsars. Previously, Russian tsars lived in the Kremlin. And after the Soviet government moved from Petrograd to Moscow in 1918, Lenin and his party comrades at Trotsky, Stalin, Kalinin, Lenacharsky and others settled here. But it should be noted that even in the Kremlin there was a certain ranking. For example, it was decided that Trotsky does not pay for food, so he gets it for free. In the early 1920s, a commission was set up under the Central Committee of the Party to check the privileges of the country's top officials, and it came to curious conclusions. For example, Lunacharsky's enlightenment turned out to be the most appetizing. He received lunch for seven people from the council canteen. He and his staff moved into perhaps the most luxurious apartment in Moscow. Today it is difficult to imagine what kind of atmosphere prevailed in this two-story house. Only some elements of the interior of Anatoly Vasilyevich's office have been preserved. At the end of the 1930s, the new party elite was already beginning to populate not only luxury apartments, but also individual mansions and state dockets. People's Commissar of Internal Affairs Lavrenti Beria and his family settled in this mansion on Malay Nikitsky in 1938. This house was chosen for him personally by Stalin. In one half of the house lived the People's Commissar with his wife Nina Tamorzova, and in the other the family of his son Sergo. The hostess of the house was his wife Marfo, the granddaughter of the proletarian writer Maxim Gorky. However, in fact, this mansion seems incredibly large, there is a place where you can get lost. But in literature and cinema, the image of a true communist was presented in a completely different way. Communists have always adhered to Lenin as the main moral leader. His image was depicted in paintings, posters, and literary works, in films and in the actor's theater. For such a role, it was always necessary to get the approval of the highest party bodies. To get the title of People's Artist of the USSR, it was necessary to play Lenin. A lot of people simply chose this role, because they immediately received apartments, cars, and status. By the way, a significant number of those who played Lenin later became heads of local WTO branches. 
At that time, it was called the Union Theater Society, and then the All Russian Theater Union of Managers. Therefore, it was necessary to constantly maintain their correct ideological form at the meetings of the party committee. Jokes in the direction of power are the wrong image, and even if the actor forgot the text, were equal to career execution. Discipline has already lost the military system. The appearance of the communists has changed, which has moved from Stalinist paramilitary uniforms to strict suits and light shirts with a tie. And the party elite ordered clothes from special ateliers. Members of the Politburo preferred to wear strict draped coats of dark colors and expensive fur hats. Brezhnev appreciated mink hats most of all, and it was thanks to the secretary general that they became fashionable. Gradually, the state split into two unequal parts, in one the majority, which is forced to stand in queues in ordinary shops, in the other the heads of various levels, that is, officials who held key positions in the political system of the country and had state dakas. The party represented the upper stratum of society. It is no coincidence that even Bulgakov mentioned this, describing how they seized all the palaces, sanatoriums and apartments. Party officials had such levers of power that they could afford everything. One of the important privileges of party chiefs was to receive special food supplies. After all, it was impossible to buy everything you needed in stores, even in metropolitan stores. While there were no such delicacies in ordinary stores, canned food, imported instant coffee bean drinks, and sausage products are in short supply. If you are a high-ranking leader of a major political party, then all these goods will be delivered directly to your home, and you will not have to go anywhere. This was perceived naturally, since many members of the party counted on their career growth, taking into account privileges such as a place to receive food, treatment, education of children, etc. This was all included in a scheme in which wages and power privileges were not the only advantages. If you were a member of the Central Committee of the party, you were close to becoming a French celestial. The leaders of the party and the state had personal cars, the best food and scarce imported clothes, which were bought in special sections of department stores, such as the Central Department Store. In Moscow, the country's best doctors, Representatives of the scientific and creative elite worked under the Kremlin, and many party members had access to medical care. On Brezhnev's personal instructions, when his health became ill, doctors went to Geneva to purchase drugs that stimulated his life. It was impossible to hide all these double standards, and, of course, they were dissatisfied. Still, they noticed how party slogans diverged from reality, and that's when the concept of kitchen democracy appeared. It arose during the reign of Khrushchev and flourished under Brezhnev. The most pressing issues related to everyday life could be discussed with friends and neighbors, argued and expressed their opinions. In order to become a member of the CPSU, it was necessary to have a guarantee from an experienced party member who would guarantee that the candidate was worthy of being a member of the party. Of course, positive characteristics and another year of the candidate's work, it was necessary to show that you are responsible and highly moral at work and at home. A party ticket was the same document as a passport. His loss threatened the carrier with big problems, up to and including dismissal from work, and the person could no longer apply for another position. Party bodies in the USSR decided everything, and therefore even ordinary citizens, who the parties did not belong to the port committees with various requests. Someone asked for an apartment. Someone complained about their boss, who lives in a two-story house. Wives wrote complaints about their unfaithful husbands, drunkards and brawlers. In 1982, Brezhnev died, he was briefly replaced by Andropov, and then by Chernenko, Supreme Soviet of the USSR. One by one, the elderly members passed away Politburo Suslov, Ustinov, Gromyko. These times were popularly called the races on elevators. With the death of an important party official, all his immediate relatives were deprived of their usual privileges. All good things go to others. to the new party leader Gorbachev with imposters who wanted to take something for themselves. Change the deep understanding of this task he did not have party assets or a mechanism, and he was afraid internally such changes. 
He understood that any change in fundamental ideology could lead the country to collapse. Communists publicly tore and burned their party cards. Today, of course, no one blushes. Из этой ситуации я делаю для себя выводы. Я придерживаюсь того, что будем идти по пути формирования бюджета на тех принципах, на которые, которые содержатся в законах, принятых Союзом СССР. Их никто, никто не отменял и не имеет права отменить. Из этого я буду действовать как президент. The day after the coup on August 22, 1991, in the evening, a crowd of thousands gathered on the square in front of the KGB building, and a monument to Jerzynski was demolished to the screams. And after that, calls were heard in the crowd to destroy the building of the Central Committee on the Old Square, but the protesters were stopped. And on the morning of August 23rd, here in the Old Square, they announced a general evacuation from all the buildings of the Central Committee of the CPSU, and there were 24 of them, which is about 3,000 people, and they will also deprive former party leader Mikhail Gorbachev. It just so happened that the party of the Soviet Union gave birth to him and she buried him.